Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel BBR English. I'm your host Varshit and I will be sharing some of the key ideas on how to improve communication skills as a working professional in India and specifically how you can boost your spoken English fluency. So let's get started. So today's video is about an interesting concept called as a Delheim speaking framework. And if you can understand this framework, then you will never ever have any problem speaking in any setting whatsoever using English or any other language as well. But we're going to focus on speaking English here. But once you understand this framework, you can speak in any setting, prepare for it, and you would never have to worry about embarrassing yourself. The key idea on the Delheim speaking framework is that every conversation and every time you go out to speak is context dependent. You cannot just use your regular rinse and repeat ideas and the way you talk and your body language and the words you choose, etc. In a coffee with the friends or in an office meeting or delivering a keynote presentation somewhere. The context determines how you prepare, what you prepare, how you say, what you say and everything else around it. And while using the eight step framework, you will be able to identify what exactly you have to do for your preparation in each settings. So let's dive deep into the eight points Delheim's framework consists of. The point number one is setting. So you have to keep into your mind what setting are you going to speak in. And by setting, it could be an office presentation in your conference room, or it could be a client lunch, or it could be a keynote presentation somewhere uh, where you're delivering at a conference. But you have to keep into mind the setting you're going to be speaking upon because that determines how you're going to be dressed, that determines what topic and agenda you're going to take in, that determines how long are you going to speak, that it will also determine how much you are prepared. For example, if you are in, on a client conversation, uh, you will go prepared with the point but won't be prepared with the entire script. But compared to that, when you're talking in the PowerPoint presentation in an office, you may or may not be prepared entirely script by script. I do not recommend doing that in a PowerPoint presentation, but you should want to be thorough with the points of the slides and what you're going to talk about. And if you go on a keynote speech, you better prepare everything word for word with script. Going impromptu in front of a hundred or five hundred or even a thousand people is not going to be a nice sight if you fumble and mumble there in front of them. So understand the setting you're going to talk about. Uh, and that setting will allow you to understand how you're going to prepare for that particular speech. And you can take inspirations and examples about other speakers and other speeches in that setting and prepare accordingly. The second component of the Delheim's framework is participants. It follows directly from the setting. Based on the setting, you will have a set of participants. And you have to understand who are you going to be talking to. For example, is this going to be your co-worker in a regular weekly sprint meeting? For example, you're a software engineer and you have to present your status update to the product manager as well as the rest of the team and your engineering head. Uh, that's a different setting compared to when you are in, let's just say, CXO member of a company and maybe CEO or a CFO and you have to explain what the the production for the next quarter is going to look like for the company and you're doing it with the board members and you have to be far more articulate and far more concise and be prepared with the stats and figures and same goes for a public presentation as well if you're doing to us to broader shareholders meeting but you can understand knowing which participants you're going to interact with will uh, determine a lot how we're going to be prepared and how you're going to conduct yourself the third part of the delheim speaking framework is the ends and by the end, it means the end goal. Uh, we have talked about in our videos before as well that there's a point of communication. Otherwise, it's just chattering. You just don't go out and just speak out words just for the sake of the entertainment. When you speak in an official setting, you're either trying to persuade someone, you're either trying to inform someone, or you're trying to inquire something. So there are reasons why you are speaking. And Understanding what your end goal is like will determine what kind of a tone you're going to look like, what kind of research you're going to do. For example, if you're going to do a persuasion, that means you have to come prepared with a lot of facts, evidence, figures, citations, and that should look like in your presentation. You want to be prepared that, yes, I am going to go into a conversation trying to convince somebody, trying to change their mind. And as a grown up adult, you probably might realize changing other people's opinion is incredibly difficult. So you might want to come very well prepared with all, everything in your hand. Now compare this to the fact that if you are trying to just inquire or ask a question, 
then you may not have to come with a lot of preparation and presentation. You can just raise your hand and ask a point, uh, ask a clarification for a point or provide a, bi a basic amount of information and then ask the other person to explain themselves. So having that end goal in mind makes it very, very easy on how for you to understand how much you have to speak, how much you have to prepare, what kind of sources you have to look into, what kind of a preparation you have to do. And overall, just makes your conversation and communication smoother and simpler. The fourth point in the Delheim's framework is key. And the key is a fancy word here for non-verbal communication. And, and this includes things like your facial expressions, your body language, and very importantly, the vocal projection you're doing and the sound of your voice. And you have to have a good understanding of the uh, these non-verbals, how are you going to use them? If you are talking to a friend, you can be very, very animated and very, very happy in bustling. Or you can even be very angry, even at the minor points. But if you're in a corporate setting, which is what we're talking about here, you might want to be a lot more formal. You might want to use the lowest register you can use for both men and women. You do not want to come out in a high pitchy voice, but it makes you shrill, which makes you feel like you're very, very emotional. And that's something you do not want to do in an office setting. And overall, your code of conduct and the, how you're dressed up and the, how the body language looks like. Your body language should not be extremely aggressive or extremely passive. It should have the right amount of energy so that the conversation remains lively. But it should not be anything that just either bores or intimidates the other person. Specifically, if that person is a key person of interest like your boss, your manager or a client. The fifth point ends up being is instrumentalities and with instrumentalities what we refer here is the degree of formality you will get into in a conversation and when you want to be when you're in an office meeting if you're just talking with a casual group of co-workers you can have be very very informal and but if you are going to go out and deliver an important presentation you want to use a formal tone and you in both in terms of the choice of the words you use and the the way you project yourself you want to make sure that Oral demeanor has a formal attire to it. You are following the mannerism and the appropriate dressing code, and so that that overall body and the projection and the, the the charisma that you're projecting is a formal tone. So you want to understand the instrumentalities of the the setting you're going to speak into, and act accordingly. The sixth point ends up being is the norms. Now every communication setting has certain norms and decorum that you need to be aware of. For example, if you are in again going back to the casual group of conversations over a coffee, you could be laughing at a joke uh, and quite hysterically if needed to be the joke was really, really funny. But uh, let's go back to the uh, corporate setting. And if you're delivering a presentation there, you want to be making sure that you're following the appropriate code of conduct and the, the knob set up for the ecosystem. For example, if you're using the mic, you want to make sure that the mic is a little too low and your breath is not coming into the mic. Uh, and you have a systematic system of asking questions and answering to them. And what the and if, you, if your office has a certain policy in terms of the presentation as well, uh, the certain degree of formality and certain color code and so the other norms that they've already established you want to follow them you might also even have a greeting norm in some of the offices you have a specific way how you greet other people and how you kickstart a meeting so you want to make sure of these norms are there sometimes these norms can be hidden as well specifically if you're going to meet someone much above your level and there might be a degree of formality you're not used to and for example the kind of table etiquette you have to have when you are in a in a meeting with a very high executive which you've never met before and in that settings you might actually want to consult your seniors and your managers on what the best appropriate behavior would look like uh, specifically on the small points like the the table mannerisms and how you go around you might even want to have a feedback on that as well but the idea ends up being there would be spoken and unspoken norms in every conversation and you want to be well aware of those norms and stick to them otherwise you're going to stick out and that might be sticking into the eyes of the people and that is not a great experience the final point is genre and by the genre it ends up being is what kind of the conversation is overall it's all about uh, is it a humorous conversation is it a sarcastic conversation is it a scary conversation is it a storytelling uh, for example let's just say you are a manager who has to have a conversation with an employee who is about to get fired the tone is going to be very very dull and boring and point blank because you do not want to give away any verbal sign of which can cause distress to the person who is getting fired 
and similarly if you are promoting someone you have to understand the genre is going to be excited and you would want to share anecdotes and experiences on what you like in the person to get that person excited to get that person upbeat and then use that uh, genre to drive the environment of the conversations you're going to have in so understanding the genre of the conversation is incredibly important in setting up the tone and the atmosphere and how you communicate with the people so if you follow the del heim framework from beginning to the end you will have a much easier time preparing for any conversation in any setting and that will make sure that you come prepared and you stick to the expectations that the people have from you and if you do it right you will be amazed at how amazed people are at your amazing speaking skills so keep del heim framework in mind every time you prepare and rock your next speech thank you <laughs>